Has this ever happened to you? You're a T-posing zombie inside the Godot game engine, and you see a motion capture man who happens to be making you very uncomfortable. You only have one option, and that is to fire a Souls knockoff spell at him and uh, do him a little damage. So I'll show you what that looks like now, and we can spawn a few of these, and we'll see what that looks like. So a few more, and we can finally vanquish our demon. So I'm going to show you how to create that effect pretty easily within Godot in a short amount of time. So to achieve this, we can do it pretty easily. All we need is a starting position. In this case, I have a position 3D right here, and we're going to be moving to one of these, which is... Uh, a position that I have added to a group and I've called it pause so all these are in the group pause and we're going to loop through that group and create an orb for each one of those so when we hit enter I have this uh, on the camera script just because it was easy you could put this on whatever script you want to trigger the firing action but when I hit UI accept we uh, run this function spawn orbs, so we loop through all the nodes that are in that group pause, and that just gets all the positions. We then create a ball for each one, which is an instance of our orb, which we're loading in as a pre-packed scene, and we'll get to that in a second. So we go back there. Um, now, once we have our orb instance or our ball instance, we want to add that to our start, which is just our position 3D that we are starting from this original one right here. So then we set our balls global transform dot origin to the start position 3D's global transform dot origin. That's just where it is in the world and it's uh, relative to its translation. So then we set our ball as top level and that just means that our ball will move independent of its parent, um, translation speaking. So now we're going to take our ball and activate a tween, which is a function that we've created on our tween and we pass it in whichever um, node we are currently on. So whichever position we are currently moving to. So we'll go ahead and check out the orb function. And uh, the orb is basically just a mesh. We have some particles here that just trail behind it. It's just more orbs. So I just put that on the inside and that way it'll trail behind it when I turn off. Uh, make sure you have local coordinates turned off and it'll have this nice trailing effect. We also have two tweens which we make use of in an area so we know when we are colliding. And then we have the area hooked up with a signal to uh, our script which I'll show you now. We go to the script and uh, so this is a function we're calling and we're passing in the position. So. We then just activate the uh, first tween. Uh, we interpolate the property. We're calling it on ourself. We're moving our translation. Uh, we're getting our global transform.origin. So that's where we're starting from. And then we're moving to the firing position, uh, the global transform.origin. And then to location time is just a uh, export variable we have up here. It's like three seconds is what I think I put it on. So we can change that here. I'll change it to one second so it'll be faster. And um, yeah, you can change it wherever you want. And then this is the transition type and the easing type. You can read up on that if you want. It's, you know, there's a lot of fun stuff you can do here. And then uh, we just call the tween to start. So once that tween starts, we have this uh, tween hooked up to this function right here. So as soon as it finishes, it calls that. And now we're gonna move to our enemy or our mocap man who is making us feel like we need an adult. So we're going to get our mocap guy by doing this. If we go back to our scene, we can see we open up our mocap and then we have this mocap position, which is where we are actually firing at. So all that is is uh, just an empty space for me to fire at, but it's in the group mocap and it's the only thing in this group so when i go back to my orb script and i call git tree dot git nodes and group mocap and then i use uh, this to get the first index in that array it's always going to be our enemy and that's a really quick and dirty way to get it but it's um you know it's useful for when you're prototyping 
and then we're just you know doing the same thing with our tween that we did up here except this time we're moving to uh, our enemy our arch enemy the mocap man and then once we get there we just have another thing hooked up here uh, another signal from this one so once that tween is complete it goes to this and we queue free ourselves and then if we hit the body and we're in the body and our the body.name is mocap hooligan we're going to say body.getparent.die and that just plays the animation on our mocap man but you could obviously swap that out for um you know uh take damage or whatever uh, another fun thing you could do is if we go back here to our orb instead of having them all fire at once i added a randomizer up here we just add um on ready var random equals random generator dot new ran dot randomize just make sure it ran it's random every single time otherwise it'll just be the same number over and over and then we have to say uh we create a num here and we're passing in a rand range and uh let's go ahead and print the number and then instead of saying to location time we're gonna say num and uh yeah let's run that and that should be kind of entertaining to see So as you can see, they all fly at different times now. And we can spawn a ton of these, and my computer doesn't really like it, but you know. Uh, that's not my concern, and our mocap man has been slain. So some people might not like the idea of using uh, tweens for projectiles, but I think they can be very effective for prototyping things when you really want them to just go to a certain area. So Godot seems to like tweens, Bill Gates really seems to like tweens, our politicians really seem to enjoy tweens, and uh, I'll leave you on that. Uh, with that, have a good day. I am the average Godot enjoyer, and uh, more tutorials and dumb shit to come.